guys, X Affinity here. Just doing a real quick short video because I notice a lot of people are panicking and do all crazy shit because people are seeing how the SEC requests to extend deadline for Ripple discovery case after two year investigation. So what the SEC is doing, if we look right here, it says the agency asked the court to extend the deadlines for discovery for two months. So they're trying to, uh, the SEC, what they're doing, they're pretty much stalling. So they're really trying to push it back to like 60 days, as you can see. Um, the reason for this, because they, they're trying so hard to get everybody out of XRP. And this doesn't surprise me at all, because like I said in my previous videos, they have all year to shake everybody out of their XRP, because it was designed for the banks and institutions to have. So what they're going to do, they're going to keep stalling and stalling until... All these banks are ready when they feel like okay we got most people shaking that because they can track on how many people own uh, these coins so they're trying to limit as much uh, people as possible so but the people that know what they hold and look at XRP as a long-term investment they're gonna hold us and that's what we are you know especially me you know so as long like I said you know don't be fear because a lot of people are panic selling and they're so impatient they don't understand they don't understand what is a an investment they just look at it like a, tr a swing trade so if you're a swing trader you, you might as well not buy XRP because if you buy XRP um, you know you're not going to have that patience because XRP was made to be a long-term investment not like a get quick uh, overnight if you want to get try to gamble you want to probably go to a different YouTube channel and check out a different coin On my channel I don't teach pump and dump coins I just teach long-term wealth and I'll bring generational wealth which is going to be XRP that's the, going to be the main coin and XLM and what else XDC and then what you got V chain and also you got um, what else Allogram. So if we look right here on our exchange, which is crypto.com, let this load up. It's taking for a while to load up. We'll just crash it, open it up. There we go. I don't know why it does that sometimes. But if you go on XR, if you go on here, you can see how XRP is 84 cents. <clears throat> you go on the weekly chart. Go on the weekly chart. It was at what 90, like what 90 cents, 91 cents, and then it drove down. So XRP is like steady, staying right here. So this is its new all-time uh, lows right here. So this is the all-time lows, which is in the 80 to 96 range. So it's just remaining steady right now. And if you go to VeChain, VeChain is like, too, it's remaining steady. See, it's like 11 cents to 10 cents. So you see all these remaining steady. And if you go to Stellar, it's doing the same thing. Well, it's like 30 cents, yeah, around 33 cents. This is a good buying opportunity. So if you have XRP, if you're satisfied with your bags, get some Stellar, because Stellar is going to be the people's coin right so xrp is the bank coin stellar is the people's coin it's very similar to xrp in a different way though but it's xrp is totally totally you know different between stellar so yeah see it's remaining steady between 33 to 32 so that's good <clears throat> bitcoin 38,000. let's go on bitcoin look at so bitcoin was 40,000, and then what on um, what day was that Wednesday it dropped between 40,000 to 38 and then it's going down a little bit Then it spiked up then it went down so it's remaining steady So it's like two two thousand away. Yeah, see 40,000 38 see because since Bitcoin is remaining steady all these other cryptos is going to remain It's going to mimic what Bitcoin does because Bitcoin is the king so for now until XRP flipped the switch right it's going to and when they, when they flip the switch on XRP, all these other utility coins like Polkadot, uh, Chainlink, uh, Cardano, so on, that have uh, utility, it's going to go up with XRP as well. Not just Stellar and VeChain, but you know, but I'm gonna end this video. You know, don't panic sell. Just keep. This is a good buying opportunity, by the way, because this is this new all-time uh, lows right here. So buy the dip right here you want to buy you don't want to buy here you want to buy a course right here see this is a good buying opportunity go to the eight hour mark 
So the eight hour mark recent, so this is still good uh, buying opportunity because it's like 83, 84 cents, 84 cents right now. But I'm gonna end this video. Um, make sure you keep all your crypto off the exchanges, put them in a hardware wallet, and make sure you keep your private keys in a safe place. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next video. So how high can this go? As of October 2017, it was calculated that the value of the world's asset classes totaled 1.14 quadrillion dollars, with above ground gold at 7.7 .7 trillion, global stock markets at 73 trillion, global money supply 90.4 trillion, global debt 215 trillion, global real estate 217 trillion, and derivative markets at 500 144 trillion. If the entire 1.14 quadrillion dollar value of all asset classes was tokenized via XRP, that would require at least $11,400 per coin. This example clearly demonstrates the scale of liquidity that XRP is designed to handle. For customers that want to take advantage of using a digital asset like XRP for liquidity, what that means is instead of pre-funding literally the trillions of dollars that banks have with other banks around the world. They pre-fund that amount that sits there. It's really dormant cash sitting there. With digital assets, you can make that much more real time to enable a payment across a border into another currency in real time. How much money is pre-funded and how long does it typically sit there? There's 27 trillion dollars sitting in these bank to bank accounts. They're called Nostra accounts, Vostra accounts. Yeah. It really is a problem that if we can reduce the time, the friction, the cost, we really can accelerate global commerce. And by reducing that friction, you accelerate that engine. It's good across the board. It's good for both companies in the United States. It's good for the unbanked communities across Africa. Uh, it, it really can fundamentally change the way the global financial infrastructure Wait, is.